Welcome to Nisi Television, the house of rest. The following program has been rated GE. It's therefore suitable for general viewing. It's not spiritual, it was not a sermon. They are carrying Join me, Bishop Stephen Wendohi, every Wednesday from 7 30 pm for a powerful life changing teachings and sermons. Why do you want to have a kuchimba vichi zima via? I want to put a manji enough. Now, what are we going to do? What is dryness? This time of dryness, it is the time to dig it deep. What do you want to dig it deep? Tune in every single Wednesday from 7 30 pm. This is a life-changing moment for each one of us right here at Nisi Television, the house of rest. Thank you very much. I want to greet all of you, all my viewers, wherever you are, in the holy mighty name of Jesus. My names are Bishop Dr. Stephen Wajohi, and I minister with the Ministry of Goshen Faith Embassy International. And we are situated at Gidolai. I want to thank God this uh, wonderful evening for God giving us an opportunity to be with you. And we'll be meeting with you at this uh, hour, 7 30, every Wednesday in the evening. And I believe and I hope that God will bless you. And you'll be having a moment of having manna from above or insight or God speaking to our lives in Jesus' name. And I want to start today by, for the few uh, Wednesdays, I, I'll, be dealing, I'll be dealing with the foundations. We know we are a product of where we have come from. We are a product of where we were born. We are a product of what we have gone through, either from the society or from the schools where we learned, or from the families where we have grown. And every person's life is affected by where one has come from. And I'm going to base my word from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, from verse 1 up to 4. I have said I'm going to deal with the foundations. Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 1 up to 4. And I read, The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean you that you use this proverb concerning the Lord of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, you shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. May God bless his word. I've said I want to talk about foundations, and I'm going to lay the foundation of what I'd like us to think through and to meditate upon in our lives. I know so many people are undergoing many challenges. Many people have prayed because of some circumstances they have found themselves in. But it is as if things are not changing. And many times people wonder what could be the cause. When I talk about the foundations or backgrounds, it is important to understand even in the scientific arena, it is known and it is believed that the present situation of a person could have its roots from where he has come from what he has gone through or where he was born or experiences he went through whether when he was young or when he was growing up and that is the reason why even when people go to the hospital and they describe the ailment they have the doctors 
you should ask that person whether in their family there is anybody who have ever suffered a certain ailment. Meaning, they are looking the source or the foundation or the possibilities. We have read the word of God here. And there is something, I don't want to go to the details, but let me mention this proverb, Ezekiel as a prophet mentioned. And he is talking about a proverb which was going aloud. The proverb is a language to communicate a certain message that helps one to understand. And he asked in verse two, uh, two what do you, uh, do you mean that you use this proverb saying, the Lord of Israel, a, a proverb concerning the Lord of Israel, saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. This proverb, there is the meaning or the message it carries. And I am using this one as I draw on foundation. We see this proverb is talking about the fathers. And we see these fathers have eaten sour grapes or bitter grapes. Fathers are the source. Fathers are foundation layers. Fathers lay foundation for their children. One, by giving birth to them. And that's why children carry the resemblance of the parents. The belief the parents have affects the way children are inclined in their faith and in their way of worship. And the writer is saying the fathers have eaten sour grapes or bitter grapes. And then he brings out the relationship between the grapes the fathers have eaten and what the children, the product, their influence, their input upon their children. And the Bible is saying the children's teeth are set on edge. I want to say as I started, there are some things that we are going through today and the foundations are from where we came from. When we look at the word foundation from the dictionary, it says it is an underlying basis or a principle or belief or norm or the structure that is built that carries a building. Therefore, we can say that foundations are roots. They are origins which one's life is built upon. It is the bedrock upon which the structure of one's life is built. And foundations affect generations and generations as we shall see. I know you are from this nation or whichever nation you are from. Last year, I happened to go to U.S. in Washington, D.C. And I visited one of the biggest museums. And it was life challenging when I went through the experiences which the slaves went through during the 18th century. And what happened in those years up to today, it is affecting America. No wonder there have been an anacrimony between the blacks and the white. But the foundations were laid between the 17th century and the 18th century. Therefore, foundations are very important for all of us to check on them. Because I have said foundations affect one's spiritual life. Foundations affect one's character. Foundations also affect one's social life. They affect you the way you behave. Sometimes they affect you the way you listen and how you relate with the people. If a child grew in a family where conflict is the order of the day, there is a possibility that child in the future will become a fighter or will become very aggressive to anybody who comes along his way. Foundations are very important. If one has grown in a foundation whereby this person suffered the rejection, the possibility of that person transferring rejection to other people is very easy. It also affects the way one relates to God. If one has grown in a family where the family members have not known their responsibility or they have absconded or have not taken up their rightful position or loss in a family, the father absconds his responsibility. 
there is a very high possibility that young man or that young lady, when he becomes a grown up, he will have a problem in taking his responsibilities. This is as a result of the foundation where this person has grown. And I want to say that as we have seen, foundations are mostly not seen, they are hidden. And we know in a building, it takes time, it takes cost. You pay very high cost. If you want to build a stone building, you are required to dig it deep. And digging deep is a lot of work. And Jesus showed us the importance of foundation. When he gave an example of two builders, people who wanted to build structures, one was wise, another one was foolish. One was prepared to pay the cost. The other one wanted to take it easy. And we are getting this even today. For a marriage to start, for a family to be stable, a lot of work is needed in laying and in selecting the materials that are required and needed in order to lay the foundation. If a young man, a young lady, you don't take time to lay the foundation, the principles that are supposed to be checked and cross-checked, which you are going to establish to be guiding posts that will guide your marriage. The possibility of that marriage collapsing in the future is very high because foundations are very important. In our country, we know we have been having a problem of buildings coming down. And after scrutiny and after engineers checking, many times this has been the cause of the collapse of this building. Poor foundations. And I wanted to discuss with ourselves about these foundations. And as we have said, Jesus talked about these two builders. One took time. He worked hard. He paid very high costs. And then he built his house. And the Bible says, and there was Tom. It built against the, the house. But the house, because it was built on a firm foundation, that building will stood. But the other builder wanted to finish quickly. And maybe he finished it very well. It doesn't matter how you do your finishing. What determines the stability of a building is not the finishing, although it is good. Not what you show people outside. It is what you do in a private. It is your private life. It is what you do when you are alone. It is the integrity of the heart. It is what you share with your wife when you are both the two of you. It is your personal work with God. This builder never took time. He just built his building on a sand. And the storms came and the rains came. And it beat against the building. And Jesus said, and the building fell with a big bang. I want to say this. Dear listeners, all what you are doing and you have ever done in your life will be tested. And what will determine your stability or your future is the foundation you laid. Foundations are of two kinds. And this is what I'll be dealing with. They are what we call evil foundations and Godway foundations. And these two foundations, they become gate through which the power behind the foundations affects your life. The writer of Psalms, in the book of Psalms 11 verse 3, say, ask a question. And he asked this question and, and he asked this. That if the foundation be shaken or are destroyed, what can the righteous do? It depends with the kind of foundation one has built over his own life. Foundations affect families. If they are good foundations, they will affect the future of that generation. If they are evil, they will affect that generation. And we are going to see from the Bible some families and foundations that were laid and how they affected different families and nations. Many times God dealt with the children of Israel and he was taking them back always to his covenant with Abraham because Abraham was the father of the Jews nation. It was a nation that had a foundation of a covenant with God and their rights even up to today.
the Israelites and their life even in their future. God always looks unto them through the eyes of the covenant he made with Abraham. A covenant based on mutual commitment. And we'll be looking at different foundations and how they affect people's life. And we know Abraham was supposed to obey, to trust, and lean on God in all his engagement. But along the way, we find the children of Israel trying to run away from that foundation. And the covenant the children of Israel, which formed the foundation upon which God was to engage with them, they tried many times to lay any other foundations. And as a result, they suffered the consequences. And this is what happened to our first parents, Adam and Eve. There was the foundation God had laid for humankind. The foundation of trusting God, obeying God, and following Him. And we know how they allowed the devil to make them doubt. And as a result, they had mistrust for the foundation. And as a result, it brought forth death. As a result of that confusion, the world has suffered the consequences we have. So foundations are very critical. They are very, very important. Foundations influence nations. The kind of foundations the founding fathers laid has affected many nations. And we are not an obsession. Our country, Kenya. Some of the intrigues and challenges we go through today as a nation is because there are some principles which either by design or through ignorance that we are not put in place. And they are affecting us even today. May God help you and help me as we go through this series on how to deal with the foundations so that we may know on what we are supposed to do. When the foundations are shaken, what should families do? What should the citizens do? If foundations of our faith are affected, like where we are today, what should we do? The Bible has said, the fathers ate the grapes, but the children felt the inch. There are some things our children are going through today because of the foundation of their great, great grandfathers. And I said foundation are not seen. Therefore, people just see the effect like these children who is this prophet referred to. Maybe those children never knew why their teeth has problem. They don't know the rottenness of their teeth was as a result of the grapes the fathers had eaten. It is a moment for the fathers and mothers and also for the children to have a reflection on where we have come from and we take note and we tell God to help us to have an insight as we ask ourselves a searching question. Could there be a possibility what I am going through was a foundation and that foundation opened a door for demonic attacks, for frustration, for failure, for disappointment to become part of my life. The Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. As we look forward to the next Wednesday, we will now be continuing with the same. I would like you to take some time and you have a moment of reflection and you tell God to open your eyes the way he did it to Moses and he was able to see what was causing the problem he had with the Israelites. When God opened up his eyes and he saw the scene that was done in the garden of Eden. Could there have been a, 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 some kind of a scene or a door that have been causing misery in your life? As I pray for you this evening, it is my prayer that God will help you to build the right foundation that cannot be shaken even when storms come. May we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus.
I want to thank you for giving us an opportunity with my dear listeners to listen from your word. Thank you for reminding us about the foundations. It is my dear prayer, dear Lord, that you are going to touch your people's life and to help them to look back on the foundation upon which their lives have been built. So that those uh, uh, foundations that are shaky can be reconstructed afresh. So that the rest of your people can be stable even during storms. I pray for that family, that man, that woman, young and old who is listening to me and is feeling he need a supernatural touch. I pray that you may touch them and you may establish them in the faith. I pray that you may help them as they pray this prayer. In Jesus' name do I pray and believe. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you very much for listening to us. I want to just pass my sincere greetings to our dear members of Gosh and Faith Ebers International Worldwide and my dear family led by my wife and my three children. May God bless you so much and do you good. Thank you very much for listening to us. Let us meet together next Wednesday a time like this, 7 that day, up to 8. God bless you so much. Enjoy your evening. Amen. Amen. This is the man. They are telling notice. Thank it's you. not spiritual. It was not a sermon. They are telling you. Join me, Bishop Stephen Wendohi, every Wednesday from 7.30 p.m. for a powerful life-changing teachings and sermons. Kwa hivyo wale hawa kuchimba vichi zima vya hawa tapata maji enough Na wale wengine wali chimba wakati wa dryness This time of dryness it is the time to dig it deep Mwabia mwensako dig it deep Tune in every single Wednesday from 7.30 p.m. This is a life changing moment for each one of us Right here at Nisi Television, the house of rest Welcome to Nisi Television, the house of rest.